Okay, so I had to change the platform because turns out front-facing camera reverses all my text. Oops. So, engineering. Let's talk a little bit about hiring an engineer. Um, if you experience cracking in your walls that's persistent or uh, any of the symptoms or signs of foundation settlement, if you have any concerns over something like that, then you should start by hiring an engineer. An engineer is gonna be paid to give you an unbiased opinion about what it's gonna to take to solve the problem. So he's not gonna be pushing a product on you, basically he's gonna be doing exactly what I'm doing with this video. There's a million types of engineers out there. Obviously you would not need an aerospace engineer or an electrical engineer out to handle your house. So, what kind of engineer do you want? A couple of them. Now, based on permitting and building code requirements, this can change. If you're in Los Angeles County, they will require you to have a geotechnical and a structural engineer um, and a special inspector all separate. We'll get in special inspection later. Um, if you hire a civil, generally it kind of works through. So as I go through this, just understand these are my recommendations. Um, this will change. Can change based off of building code requirements or just even uh, building requirements in the city that you're in. So if you're gonna go through permitting, best, or if you're gonna pull a permit in order to handle something like this, if you've thought that far ahead, best to ask the city what is gonna be required prior to jumping into this. Outside of that, engineering, um, the three engineers that you're principally gonna deal with here for building things is going to be a civil engineer. And in the civil engineering field, it sort of branches off into two other sections. You've got structural engineering, and you have a geotech. For geotechnical engineering. So generally the way that this works out is that a civil engineer can handle, ah, I'm gonna start with geotech, sorry. Geotechnical engineer. So if I'm going through the schooling process, in order to become a geotechnical engineer, first I need to become a civil engineer. Take your EIT, your engineer and training exam, pick up four years of experience, uh, take your PE exam, your professional engineering license, become a civil engineer. After that, it requires four more years of experience and usually a minimum of a master's degree in order to take a secondary test and become a geotechnical engineer. Geotechnical engineering deals with dirt. Dirt, soil, the things that are happening underneath the house. Now this is very important because everything is built from the ground up. What that means is any new construction uh, is handled first by preparing the ground, whether you're cutting a hillside, compacting the soil, taking out clay, doesn't matter what you're doing. You're preparing the ground for whatever structure is gonna sit on top of it. So everything starts right there with the geotech engineer in the dirt. Now, that's for construction, right? Same thing applies for all repairs. Repairs need to begin from the ground up. So if you are experiencing a foundation settling problem and you're gonna pick the house back up, just because a door or a window is sticking or swinging free or has a crack, doesn't mean you should replace that door and window right now. Because if you put the new window in, they're gonna reframe the window so that it's level, but your foundation is tilted. What that means is when they pick the foundation up, that now level window frame is then going to contort however high you pick the house up. Anything you do to the foundation will affect the superstructure, will affect the building above it. So, start with the ground, right? A structural engineer handles the structure, the building. Building, call it structure, whatever. So the important thing about this is the geotechnical engineer is gonna handle the soil sampling, they're gonna handle all of the analysis, right, the geotech report, and they can make some assumptions and actually handle a little bit of the foundation stuff, but generally speaking, they're not going to. They need to give the design parameters for the foundation that's going to be built. The foundation is going to be built by a structural engineer. So if you have significant issues going on in the house where you're worried about the framing or you're worried about the way that a wall is bent and if you pick and level, is it gonna collapse and what the sort of limitations of each repair is gonna be on the structure itself, then you want a structural engineer. The structural engineer can make assumptions about the soil, 
has to be this strong, has to be this, has to be this, has to be this, and then design a house around it. Geotech engineer makes assumptions about the structure and designs the soil, or does the soil and prep and blah, 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 blah. So they both correlate and you get awesomeness. Best thing you can do, structural and geotechnical engineer. The cool thing about that is civil engineer kind of handles both. They handle the structure yeah, and the soil. What does this mean? To a lesser degree, they handle structures. They can't handle, I think it's three-story buildings, hospitals, stuff like that, where a structural engineer can. Uh, brain fart. Hopefully I can edit this. Anyway, um, so a civil engineer is sort of a little bit more limited in the resources. So sometimes, even if you have a civil engineer, a uh, city will require you to get a geotechnical engineer involved, right? So if you're gonna analyze the soil, you're gonna want a uh, geotech involved. If you wanna analyze the structure, you get a structural involved. So for foundation settlement, I usually recommend, because probably 90% of the time, most people accept just a civil engineer. Sometimes a city will require civil and geotech stamps. Sometimes they require all three. It just depends. But the best way to kind of wrap your head around what exactly is going on, repair recommendations, most of the time even designing plans, uh, often even structural calcs and stuff like that, you can get from the civil engineer, although structural calcs should come from the structural. Sort of a loose end there. Anyway, um, first thing you should do, hire a civil engineer, let them do an evaluation. They're gonna be your best friends and get involved with all of the soils testing and everything that goes through that. All right guys, one more thing I wanted to say on this subject. Uh, when you hire an engineer, you can hire them for one of two things. They can come out and do their evaluation and do the full-blown analysis with repair recommendations and sampling and blah, 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 blah. It is going to run you probably a minimum of $2,000, anything below that. There's probably some risky stuff going on. Um, there's a lot of foundation repair contractors who hook up with engineers who never go to the job site, who never do soil samples, who never do tests, and this opens you up to a lot of liability. From a contract standpoint, it opens you up to a lot of change orders, and from an actual overall sense of repair, it opens you up for a higher risk of failure. There's a lot of things that are written into contracts that help, um, I'm trying to find a nice way to say the fact that they sh uh, shrug off the blame. They, they pass the blame on to other people. They say, hey, uh, homeowner decided not to do this. It's just in the contract, it's what you write, and it's super sketchy. Um, so. Just be very aware that the engineer should always, always, always visit the job site. You don't want to have an engineer doubt out in Nebraska for your California job just because they can stamp and sign and do it for 600 bucks, which they used off of a salesman's drawing. That happens a lot. So um, either an engineer or an engineer's representative should visit the site. Soil sampling should be done. Sometimes they can do test peers. I'm for that. We'll talk about that when I talk about soil sampling and um, different unit. But uh, in any case, I, I got in a lot of trouble one time for, for <laughs> providing a recommendation to a friend that was forwarded to an engineer and it wasn't the nicest thing in the world. Uh, but I still stand behind it. So I really don't mind that I got in trouble for it and I got yelled at for it. It was, uh, they said, I don't have the qualifications to make this statement, but I did, and not qualifications, I did make the statement and I still stand behind it, so I'm gonna make it again. I can hire for free, unless it's in real estate, four or five uh, foundation repair contractors in most areas to come out and provide an evaluation for me. So if I pay an engineer 500, 550 bucks for him to come out and write up basic, basic anything, then it should at least be a comprehensive basic anything that isn't geared toward a product or a service or something like that. The engineer, I mean, you, if he's not gonna stamp and sign it, you shouldn't be paying that much money. <laughs> and if he is gonna stamp and sign it, it holds much more weight than what a contractor has and that's what you're paying the money for. So if you're paying 500 or 1,000 bucks for an engineer to come out, they should at least go to the job site. They should at least do their evaluation on the job site and start with an analysis and, and include some basic repair recommendations. And 90% of the time, guys, it's gonna include a recommendation that says, you should probably get soil samples and let me do a soils report. That's normal and that's important that it's normal, right? So you can pay for a cheaper report. I don't recommend it. Um, you can get 
a lot of good information either off these videos that I'm making or from literally any salesperson for any foundation repair contractor out there to do that. Um, but spend the money. Spend the money on soils testing, on the geotechnical and on the structural engineering. If you do that, again, you're just closing the gap on what sort of change orders you can be hit with and where the liability falls. You're just reducing all of your exposure and keeping yourself, your engineers, and everybody else like uh, safe and protected. So I'm from California, everyone's super highly litigious and that's why I wanted to add this in there. Uh, but spend the money, do good engineering and um, find reputable contractors, but that's not, anyway.